Welcome back to another Natron tutorial. In this video, we're going to be looking at the filter nodes. If you hover over these nodes here and left click, it brings up all the different options we have for filter nodes. And they're incredibly powerful. You can apply them to an image, to a, a video, or any kind of object in your project, and you can achieve a lot of different results with them. So first I'm just gonna read in, we're just gonna read in a regular JPEG image. And we will, oops, we'll tie it to the viewer here. So we'll drag it onto the viewer. And we see this is actually a picture of me fishing. And we're gonna sp spice this up a little bit. So right now our project is 250 frames. We're just gonna make it, well, let's just make it one frame for, for now. This is a project that's one frame long, which means it's only a single image. So basically we're gonna use Natron as if it's like Photoshop or GIMP. We're gonna just, just do a picture with it just for all intents and purposes. But let's apply a filter here. So let's do a blur. So if we apply this blur and then go to size and change it up, we see we've got a blurry picture. Maybe I, maybe that's all I want to do is blur this out because it's like, I don't know, it's like America's most wanted and we want to just like have this, we don't want to see let people see like who I am. So we're going to just blur it and then we go to this write node and we'll write it out and we'll call this um, fish.jpg. So now this right node, oh cool, it went into the, the correct place. So everything the viewer is seeing also is being written out to this right node. And we click render, render the entire project, which is one frame. And it's just gonna write this to the desktop and then we open it up and there we go, we have a blurry picture. So essentially we've created, we've done something that we could have done in Photoshop or, or GIMP, but we did it in Natron. All right, that's cool. Um, let's disable this, hit the D key. So now we don't have the blur anymore. In fact, let's just delete it. Uh, now let's, while this node is selected, this read node, let's add another filter in or a different filter. Let's try this uh, glow filter. So glow is gonna add this in and we can see if we do glow, change up some of this, it actually really kind of makes the makes this a little bit brighter, you know, it's kind of hard to it's subtle, but if we hit the D key and disable it, we see like it changes, look up in the mountains there, when this isn't enabled, it makes everything a little bit brighter, like the highlights are a lot brighter. So we just applied a little effect here. We can apply inline, let's go to the color nodes and do this like color correct. And let's be like, hey, my face is a little too red. So we're gonna uncheck the green and the blue channels and just editing the reds in this image, we're gonna bring the saturation down just a little bit so the reds aren't so saturated. Kind of makes this picture look a little more flat and like not as interesting, but at least like all the reds are kind of subdued. So there we go. So we're like, hey, cool, let's render that out. So we can go to our right node, hit render, and then it just renders this out. It has to process some of that, the glow and some of those different uh, effects. But now we've got this, uh, yeah, that's the final output. So you're probably watching this being like, this is boring. Like I wanna do some cool stuff. I wanna like do some compositing. I don't wanna do like photo editing <clears throat> in Natron. All right, so now let's get to something more interesting. So let's change this again. So let's get rid of our glow, let's get rid of our color correct. And let's just do, let's make this a hundred frames long. So now we actually do have a video. Let's go back to the filter node and add the blur again. So now we've got this blur, but like, oh, what's going on here? How do I add this in? Do I add it to the source or the viewer? Well, let's just add it to the viewer for now. We hit control and add this blur in here. I'm gonna break the source and move it to the blur. So now everything that's going out to the viewer is also going to the writer. And the blur right now is at frame one and it's not blurred at all. Let's make it completely 100% blurry. And then let's set a keyframe. So right now, if we don't set the keyframe, every frame of our video is gonna be blurry. But if we set a keyframe here, set keyframe all, I right clicked to get that option, right click, set keyframe all. So right click, set keyframe all dimensions. And then let's go into frame like 15 and let's bring the focus in or take the blur out essentially. So now what we've done is we've got a, this blurry image and we kind of bring it into focus. So it looks like this. Ah, that's kind of cool. So now we have, now we kind of have the starts of a video going on here. So it's sort of like a video slideshow of this image. 
Maybe by frame 40, we want to do a different effect. So while blur is selected, let's add in, go to our filter nodes again, and let's add in this God rays. So what God rays is going to do from what I can tell is it takes, looks at where the original image is, and then you apply either a rotation or a scale to it. And it kind of like blurs from that original. So you can see how that looks, right? You've got a little bit of blurriness going on there, which is cool. So maybe I want to just create that kind of effect. Or actually, let's let's leave this at zero. Let's do the scale one instead, because the scale one's pretty cool. So it's sort of like, that'd be kind of cool to do at frame 40. So let's keep this where it was, which was, was it at one? Let's keep this at one, and let's set a keyframe on the scale. So we right click, set keyframe all, and then, so everything's gonna look normal here. It's gonna be well faded until frame 15, then it'll look normal. And then by frame 40, it's gonna start doing what we want here. So from here, let's go to frame 50, 10 frames later, and let's make this scale kind of zoom out. We'll scale out like this under this God rays effect. And let's go to frame 60 and we'll come back to how it was before. All right, let's see how that looks. So we play this and it might take a second to generate the preview for us. It has to process every frame. Um, and it's kind of intensive, this particular filter. Uh, it looks like it's rather processor intensive. I know that because it's taking so long, but the first time we play it, it takes long. And then by the time it gets to frame 60, it should be faster again. Now if we play through, it'll be fast. Cool, so that's the effect. Wow, that's cool, that's the, the effect we've created. So we blur in, then we do this. So this is our, our video project so far. That's kinda cool, right? Yeah, not super awesome, but it's kinda cool. So, and what we have going on is a blur, but the blur is only happening in the first you know, fraction of a second of the video. And then the God rays is only happening in the middle part, so here at frame 80, it's just the regular image. Even though these these nodes are in line, uh, they're not. They're only happening at certain portions of the video, and that's what I really wanted to show. I mean, I wanted to introduce these filter nodes, but I also want to show that you can apply a node and only have it happening during a, a portion of your timeline, a portion of your project. So even though this image is going through the blur, it's not being applied universally to the entire project it's only being used at the certain frames that we want it to be used in um, I think I'll end this video here but go ahead and play with these um, different filters if we add a bloom in here and we change the size we can you know, uh, there's all kinds of different cool things you can do and really applying these filters in conjunction with the timeline starts to just show the power of natron and what you can do and we're doing a still image here, but imagine if this was an animated background or just a single object on top of another uh, image. So you can do some really, really cool stuff. What I want you to do is play with all of these. Go through every one of them and add it in and see if you can figure out what it does. That's what I've done to kind of get familiar with these. I still haven't used even half of these before, but there's a lot of really cool filters. Play with the image um, or the color nodes as well and just get familiar with what they do and how they affect and different changes they make to your project. Play with them on a still image. And then, uh, yeah, we'll be, using, we'll be using these filter nodes to do some more advanced uh, things in future projects. So catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.